Well, it's late September 2021 here at Paris Natural Farms, and we are working on the uh, future expansion of our high tunnels and greenhouses. Uh, just about a month ago, this was all trees, <coughs> uh, and so we have been uh, working diligently to get this cleared out and, and leveled off. <coughs> and I'm standing on uh, a pad for uh, one of the new Gothics, and then we'll be putting up one here to my left, and then expanding the other one there where the tractor is. Uh, this area here, again, this was all trees. Uh, this is going to be used for ex uh, the continued expansion of our 80-foot row beds. That's kind of what we standardize on. We have 80-foot beds and 30-foot raised beds. And so we're going to continue out uh, this way with these raised beds here. And then <clears throat> pushing out that way, we're going to be uh, expanding out. There's going to be some fruit production back there, our berries, and uh, primary blackberries and blueberries, um, and, and maybe a few fruit trees, just experimental. Uh, ones and uh, back over there behind the chickens as well we have also cleared that out and that's going to be uh, more raised beds so that's going to be a, uh, some 30 foot beds and as well as some additional fruit trees and um, I think you saw on the way in that we've got <clears throat> about an acre cleared and that's going to be the main peach orchard so we're going to have three different varieties of, of peach orchards so all of that is happening this fall and winter and into next spring so uh it's going to be a very 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 busy fall and spring good morning everybody this is julian with bootstrap farmer today we're at paris natural farms and we're going to show you how to lay out a hoop house so i've got a few essential tools here we're going to start with got a stake we're going to use this to set our corners got a hammer to put these stakes in got a tape for the layout a line level which we'll show you how to use a little bit more in detail in a little bit, and the string line. And that's what the level's gonna go on, and that's gonna be the level at which you set your ground post. Uh, so our layout here, what we're using is about a six feet, five to six feet width between our uh, greenhouses here. And so um, this particular house right behind me, we're gonna extend out 20 feet, and then there's gonna be a six foot gap. And so we're actually starting uh, 26 feet away from this structure, intentionally knowing that there's a future plans to extend this existing one. And then there's going to be this 20 foot Gothic that we're putting up. Then there's going to be a six foot gap. There's going to be another 20 foot uh, Gothic. And our standard uh, high tunnel greenhouse size are 20 by 64. Nothing magical. It's just literally how we ended up putting the first one and ended up designing out our farm layout. So, um, and then our spacing, our rib spacing on these greenhouses are, are four feet. Um, uh, on center, I guess. And so what Julian's going to be doing here is he's going to be starting from um, this last greenhouse here, and it's going to be going 26 feet, and that's where our first corner post is going to be. And that's going to be our kind of our demarcation where we'll then um, square everything off with. Okay, so we have measured 26 feet off of this other hoop house. This flag here represents where our first stake's going to go. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. So we've already done the mathematical calculations. We know that from here to the other side is 64 feet. Our hoop house is gonna be 20 feet wide and that gives us a hypotenuse of 67 feet. So after we put a couple more stakes in, we'll be able to measure from the opposite corner to this corner and we should have 67 feet and that will make sure that our structure is square and not racked in one direction or the other. So we wanna make sure our front side and our back side, again, are square to each other, as well as the long sides of the hoop house. All right, so the stake we just installed is down there. And as we pan this direction along this existing greenhouse, you're gonna see that we've got a flag here. This flag represents the same distance from the greenhouse to here is 26 feet. So we're gonna install another stake here. We're gonna get a tape measure and we're gonna verify that we have exactly 64 feet from there to here. Okay, so what we've done now is we put a tape measure on the opposite end and we're verifying that we are 64 feet, which is what we've determined to be our total length of this hoop house. Now what we're gonna do, we've already measured, but we'll verify it. Um, 64, if you just hold that right there,
I started the tape on that end. You saw in the, in the last clip that we went 64 feet this direction. And what I've done is I just continued on this tape measure to 84 feet. We know it's gonna be 20 feet from that stake or that corner to this corner. So temporarily I've put a flag there so we can mark that. Now we already know by doing Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square root of c is our hypotenuse. So 64 and 20, and the square root of that is 67. So what we're gonna do now is put the tape measure on that opposite corner, and we're gonna measure 67 feet to this corner to verify that we have squared this side of the hoop house. So now we've moved our tape from that side to back to the original starting point, and we're measuring 67 feet to this point exactly right here. And I don't have a <laughs> stake. We know our measurement, our measurement 67 feet. We've got the tape measure at our original starting point and we pull the tape measure tight and we can determine here at our flag, we've got 67 feet. We're about an inch off of the flag. Now we've got three sides of this hoop house laid out. And to determine our final one, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Carl on that end, pull it back, and he's gonna measure 20 foot from that post over there to get us pretty close where our final post is gonna go. And then we'll do the same thing again, and we're gonna measure 67 feet from that post to this post to make sure both sides are square. Is that your 20? Okay. All right, so Carl now has 20 feet laid out from our original post on that side. And right behind the camera is where that 20 foot measurement is. So we're now going to measure 67 feet from our second post to our last post. And that will finalize squaring up this hoop house. Now, in a previous video series, we, we talked about doing this in your head first. Maybe you want to lay it on a paper a little bit. Um, you know, you definitely, you definitely don't want five people out here trying to, to give you numbers and to determine how you can do this. Um, be meticulous in this process. Make it slow and easy. And right there, now there's a, there's a little rise in the ground here. So we're at 67 foot one inch. For, for the purposes of building a hoop house or a greenhouse, we're well within the tolerance of making this square. So now we know that our greenhouse is square from one side to the other, and this is gonna help make you, this is gonna help make the process of building this hoop house that much easier. All right, so I've got a piece of mason line here, or string line, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and what I've done now is I've marked 24 inches or two feet up on this stake from the ground level because we know our ground posts are four feet long. We're gonna drive two feet into the ground and we're gonna have two feet out of the ground. So to determine the height of our ground posts, again, I've marked 24 inches. That's gonna to be to the top of the ground post. So I'm gonna pull my string line down to that point. And then I'm gonna take this string line and I'm gonna pull it to the other end of the greenhouse, the 64 foot length. And then I'm gonna pull it tight and we're gonna put a line level on it. And the line level is gonna help us determine the top of all the ground posts going from this side to the other side. Now your string line has got to be tight. And I'm just wrapping this and then this is not actually creating a knot, but it allows friction enough that it holds it in place and keep the line tight. Okay, so now that our line is tight, it's not level at this point. Um, I can tell you that this pad up here is actually, it is higher without a doubt than where it is down there. And we get a lot of questions about installing the ground posts when the ground's not level. And it's okay to do that, it's not a problem,
But what you're going to have to understand is that the ground's higher here, which means we're going to have to pound the post in a little bit deeper. If not, then the top of our hoop house is going to be sloped to match the ground. So what we've got to do is make sure that this line is level so that as we hammer in the ground post at every four feet, the top of that ground post is going to be right at the string line. So I have a bubble level for a string here. We're going to hook it on there and we're going to look at it. And the bubble is on this side, which means that this line is high on this side, which means we've got to come down. So we're going to loosen this up for a sec and we're going to bring it down about an inch, tighten it back up and see where we're at. Okay, so I've now moved this down a considerable amount, about five inches or so. So down there you can see that the line is 24 feet up from the ground where it's tied off is 24 inches up from the ground on that post. And here you can see that it's not. If I was to take a tape measure here, you would see this is probably only about 18 inches out of the ground. And what that's gonna tell you is that this is six inches higher here than it is down there. So you can, at this point, you could scrape this off and level this pad out. And again, you could use the same technique as, as this string line to do that process. Or you could just take your ground post on this side. We know that this string line is level. You can drive all of your posts, the top of the post to right here, and all your posts will be level. And that's the process you need to do to make sure that they're level. That way, when you insert your hoops, the top of all your hoops are gonna be at the same height. At this point, this pad's already been taken care of, the groundwork's been done. So we're gonna leave it the way that it is. We're gonna drive these ground posts a little bit deeper than we are down there. And there's gonna be a little natural slope for water to run off on this side of the greenhouse. Uh, this, can be, this can be really intimidating for some folks. When we put up our first hoop house, uh it was it was very intimidating and after you've done one it seems so easy and uh and stress-free it's really not that complicated um the leveling and the squaring off um you know draw it out i think julian said to do that and and it'll it'll help you at least get somewhat acclimated with the process but with these greenhouses we're not building frame houses here and so you've got a lot of leeway and and i've even been told you have one or two inches of play with this, with these things. And so don't beat yourself up on, on how square everything is and, and even how perfectly level the ground is. Uh, you definitely want to worry about your watershed, but uh, don't beat yourself up if you have pockets. We're going to have to go back after we get done with the ground post and do some more leveling. So go easy on yourself. <clears throat> it, it can be a little intimidating, but uh, don't, don't stress too much over it. And, follow these, these processes and these guidelines and, and you'll do just fine with it.